Alright, what's up guys? So I got a Ikiora Layer of Behemoth booster box. The story of this is I bought this on TCG Player because I didn't know if my local game shop, my Cool Stuff Games, was open. Uh, I didn't know if you could order or anything like that, so I decided to play it safe and just order it online. Uh, I don't know if it comes with the collector booster with the Godzilla stuff with it and all that. Uh, my expectations for this set a lot of people are saying mixed reviews about it because it's not like your typical set honestly because it has mechanics like mutate and has like all this other stuff and these cycles with the triland cycles that you're able to cycle them and also you have ultimatums which are really juicy i love ultimatums because i'm building uh joda archmage internal so i'm building six commander decks basically but I've been working them, tweaking them little by little. Um, I don't know if I should do videos of them, but like, I'm the off time. You know. Oh, so I do get a box topper. Look at that. All right, cool. Okay, so we're gonna see what the box topper is in the end. Ooh. I'm not gonna show it just yet. So that will be like the coup de gras at the end, essentially. So let us begin. We got King Kong over here. <laughs> so let's see, left, middle, or right? Uh, Soren is like, why are you covering my face? <laughs> Soren was actually the first planeswalker ever pull. I was into magic since like Innistrad to return to Ravnica cycle. Around 2012, 2013, around that time. So let us begin. Oh man, these packs look really loose. The plastic is oof. It's like really loose. <laughs> to me it's like Christmas, but it sucks because organizing them is a real pain in the ass. So I don't know. Okay, the rares are probably in the back. Yeah, they change they change it up, so it used to be the commons would go up front, then the uncommons, and then the rares and all that. So we have to go backwards, basically. This feels like Pokemon in a sense. So cool. So I got an alternate art. Alternate arts I'm gonna put on the side. Uh, Vulpecit. We'll put this aside over here. Let me see if it shows up fine here. I don't know if I have to zoom in a little bit more. Cards of note, I'm just gonna like put up to the camera basically. I haven't looked into the cards that much, honestly. So I don't know if you evolving wilds. Nice card, I put that to the side. It's it's a card of note. Fertilid, another great card. Good commander staple. Lord Dracus. Okay, so that's an alternate art. Archipelago, I don't know what that does. It's a mutate card. Keen Sight Mentor. I have to look at these later. What? That is pretty sick. Look at that. So I got an alternate art planeswalker, Luca Copper Coat Outcast. And then put a library creature cards, Exalta. There's damage. That's a really cool alternate art. It's like anime type style, so it's really cool. Dinosaur in a forest. Okay. I do apologize for the camera angle, I'm not to get a camera work and all that stuff. So let me see how you open these packs. Okay, so they got the they got the little tear on the side. To make it a lot easier. A tear. So here we go. Ferocious tiger gorilla. A tiger and a gorilla at the same time. A cat ape. Are you gonna see like weird mixes of beasts in here? Okay, they got forbidden friendship. I don't know if anybody's in a forbidden friendship, but whatever. <laughs> Another evolving wilds. Exaltar creature with power four grid. I was looking at that blade banish. I guess we'll just put this here ship it. It's a useful card evolving wilds still, but I'll just put it there in the bulk. I just I do look at the bulk by the way. See if like there's something eventual. Void Beckoner. This is a really good card. There's actually an alternate card of this card that's very controversial and makes a that's a pretty big buck if you pull it off. So Void Beckner, I'm gonna put this on the side because it's really good for Soul Packing, it has Depth Touch. I pulled the Ultimatum, so we got Emergent, 
ultimatum for two black, two green, no, three green and two blue. Search a library for up to three monocolor cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards. Shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the other cards without paying their mana cost. Exile, emergent, ultimatum. Sweet stuff. Pretty cool. So we'll put the ultimatum right here. Alternate arts. No. Okay. Moving on. It's just a hassle for me because every time I open a new set, it's, it's like Christmas, but at the same time, it's a real pain because you have to organize them, put them in a binder, put them in a pile per se. And then you have these tokens right here that you get to punch them out and put them on your creatures because now it's a new mechanic that you're able to give creatures certain buffs, which is pretty cool. Fire Prophecy. This is an interesting card. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to read that more. Um, pretty good. So basically there's three dives of target creature. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. If you do, draw a card. Useful, I would say, but it's circumstantial, honestly. But it, it might see play. It's It beckons back to an old school card, which I can't remember. Humble Naturalist is interesting. Zenith Flare... Dire Tactics. This is very good, actually. So for this uncommon, right here. So Dire Tactics. It says, Exile target creature. If you don't control a human, you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. And this is for two mana. You're exiling a target creature. So I say it's worth it. It's definitely worth playing. So I'm going to put this aside because it's definitely, definitely useful. I add this to one of my decks, but I'm not too sure, so we'll see. Valiant Rescuer, and a rare is Jam Razor. Look at that art! This is like straight off of a comic book. So, three colors, one green, mutate, reach, trample. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. It's pretty sweet. I don't know why people are bashing this set that much. Um, I don't think it's worth much of financial value. Maybe in the future it might be worth some value. Uh, same with other sets that I bought previously, but Pharaohs Beyond Death it was questionable as well. But remember, some of the cards will raise in value as time passes. So, I'm what we call a speculator. And we look at things and see what happens when time passes. And we anticipate. <laughs> Silly, I should shut up. All right, Sprite Dragon. I haven't drinking Sprite in a while. Migration, quote, migration path. Okay, Titan's Nest is our rare. This is an enchantment that says for what color is one black, one green, one blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You put that card into your graveyard. Exile a card from your graveyard, add colorless. Spend this mana only to cast a colored spell before X and its mana cost. It's pretty cool. Would I use it myself? Eh, not really. It, to me it's like binder fodder, but it is useful indeed for, the, for some people who consider those type of cards. In that color identity, but... Me, myself... Eh... I don't have green red shenanigans of those three colors. I used to. I used to play Mimeoplasm, but I don't have, I don't have Mimeoplasm anymore, so I don't play that. I have a whole bunch of different decks. Alright. Let us see what we pull here. A porky parrot, so a porcupine and a parrot. <laughs> So this mutate to colors one red, this creature deals X damage to any target where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Some of these creatures are pretty weird and questionable, I'm not gonna lie. Mythos of Brockos. Okay, so this is a salt eye. Um, if blue black was spent to cast a spell, search your library for a card. Put that card into your graveyard to shuffle your library. Return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. OK. 
okay. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. No, not really my color identity, but it's useful nonetheless. guys are doing um, I hope hopefully you guys are still being safe uh, being very cautious with these with these times that are going on you know just be careful out there even though like I'm still working and all that I you know play it safe and protect myself as well as everybody else during this time we'll get through this together oh cool I got the one of the companion creatures they say companion is a pretty broken mechanic it's a big mistake that wizards has done so this is zirda the dawn waker one colorless one red white one hybrid red white red white uh each permanent card in your starting deck has an activate ability abilities you activate that are mana abilities cost two less to activate this effect can't reduce the mana and that costs to less than one mana target creature can't block this turn pretty cool companion what to think of companions? I think this is this is my opinion about the mechanic of companion. Uh, when it first came out, I was okay with it. Uh, I didn't pay too much mind about it, but I can see it's a pretty oppressive, a broken mechanic. Uh, it's the fact being versus the fact having one commander, you have two commanders out in the field, which is pretty crazy. Um. A lot of people are against it, they're saying, Wizards, what are you doing? It's a big mistake, why did you print that mechanic? Uh, I could make a list of all oh, the Bruce swag. <laughs> the Bruce swag. He's so swaggy with his um, spines and all that. Regal Leosaurus. Leosaurus, actually, cut short crystal. Okay, so that's the Teamer crystal, the uncommon one. Look at that, we got another Planeswalker. We got the same Planeswalker, but regular art. Pretty cool. So there, I have a few rebuttals when it comes to certain things in Magic. There's, there's certain things I don't agree with. And I currently, as I'm a Reddit junkie, I've been reading a lot of posts. The way I Twitter and all that, and I... I hear people talking about the companion mechanic, how that mechanic should stop, you know, basically. And I'm starting to agree with them, and they, they explain what the synergies are and all that, which I kind of know, but, like, in the long-term run of a game, it's not very, how should I say, ideal for people to play. But, yeah, that's just my two cents. So the mechanics that I don't like in particular and I can talk about. I don't know if I should make a video about that. I don't know if I repeated myself saying that. Bonders Enclave, I actually need this card. This is a rare land at colorless three, tap draw card, activates ability only if you control a creature of power four or greater. This is gonna go in one of my commander's decks. This is probably gonna go in my Aldrazi commander deck that I'm building. I'm building Kozilek. Uh, distortion of truth. Ooh, ooh! I didn't see you there. Satiable hemophage, and this is a foil too. You barely notice it's foil because of the R and all that, but yeah. Uh, mutate two colors, one black. Death touch. Whenever this creature mutates, each opponent loses X life and gain X life, or X is the number of times this creature has mutated. I didn't see you there, buddy. Sick card. Really, honestly, I don't care what I pull out of this box. Um, ideally, there's not any particular cards I want to pull. I just want to get some stuff, you know? It's not like, oh my god, I want this card. I need it, I need it. You know, it's, I, I don't have that notion with this set. Because eventually, this set's probably out on the market and the prices will go down, so it's easily affordable for the lid. We'll put that aside. Great commander staple. 
Back for more is a good card too. Price is a little steep. But it's situational. Lava Brink Venture. Okay, so as Lava Brink Venture enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. Lava Brink Venture has protection for each converted mana cost of the chosen value. Two colors with white. It's pretty good. Situational again. Leave the stampede foil. Okay. Okay. <laughs> work out later on. At these times all you can do is just pretty much um, take care of yourself. What I've been doing is working out, playing video games, um, reading a lot, um, studying quite a bit, and working. It's not my free time. Generals and Force is an interesting card. Okay, let me read this on Common because Building Abzan, Commander deck. Wood White, Wood Black, Legendary Humans you control have Indestructible. Two, Colorless, Wood White, Wood Black, Exile target, key, target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, create a 1-1 one, one White Human Soldier Creature Token. Uh, I like the fact humans, Legendary Humans have Indestructible, but the price to do the Exile effect is too much. It's okay, if anything. Just don't like the price so much. I'm a poor peasant. I wouldn't pay that, honestly. This is me. Voracious Great Shark. Flash with Voracious Great Shark enters the battlefield. Counter target artifact or creature spell. Okay. We got the Foil Mysterious Egg. When well, this creature mutates, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Alright. I put foils here too. Because, um. I like proxies and altars. I don't know how to make them, but I'll learn since I have a bunch of free time now. Let's see if I could make some. Not good artistically, but hey, you never know. I might find somebody. There's a Twitter post saying that the next set that's coming up, um, somebody predicted it. Saying that Companion might be coming back again, which I'm too happy with. What? Yo, this is worth this is worth money. So uh Zag of Triumph. Alternate art. That art looks sick. It is a battlefield tap cycling three. It's a tap land for three colors. It's great art though. Very good art. Um, I saw some videos recently on YouTube and they were talking about how if you're going to build a commander deck, try to not build any tap lands into your deck because it slows down your deck. Do I agree with that notion? Yes and no because most of the lands that, that come in on top are pretty expensive in those colors. So if you need to put them, try to put as little as possible. You know, as that's just my opinion, um, but it's a very good and valid opinion that will make you a better player and commander. So I do highly agree with that that idea. So yeah, primal empathy is an interesting card. I'll read that later. I don't want to waste too much time. Where is Skycat Sovereign? And for each of the creature control five, create a 1 1 white cat for creature total five. Uh, slow build up. It's a good card, but it has a slow build up. You could essentially make it grow over time. Make my ninjas grow. <laughs> like I say, the real word, because I don't want to get it. In trouble YouTube, whatever. But that meme makes me laugh every time in that video. So yeah. I do curse sometimes. Um, but 
but not offensive, not offensively, like to the point where I offend somebody. For that matter. Super dark. <laughs> this, this card is screaming Sultai. It's like build Sultai. Just got the alternate art of that card. Which is sick. I want another ultimatum, honestly. I only have one. And it was a Sultai ultimatum, too. So it's like, oh, this is like the Sultai box. Clearly. I think it's a sign. Hey, I'm going to go back to Sultai. Dream Tell Heron. Whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. Cool art. A little mental bird. I don't know the lore of this set too much. I have to look it up when I have time for the lid. Put that aside. Savia Crystal. Reveal the Everwise. Let me read this card for a second. Got a full card to apologize about that. Real the Everwise. Real the Everwise gets plus one plus zero for each instant and sorcery card of your graveyard, where you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn. Draw that many cards. My cards are blue and red. Interesting. Interesting. It's it's definitely buildable, but I don't see too much power with this card, honestly. Whenever you discard, draw that many cards. Basically a cycle commander that synergizes with instant and sorceries to make it more powerful. Pretty cool. And this set's about cycling as well, if obviously you haven't noticed. Just I guess it's a broken mechanic, but it's a strong mechanic. Sword. Kind of looks like Red 13, kind of. <laughs> For all you Final Fantasy heads out there. Speaking of which, I uh, playing Final Fantasy 7, but the OG edition. Ah, uh, nice! Okay, I got another ultimatum. I'm playing the OG version on the Switch. Later on, I'll play the remake on the PlayStation 4. Currently playing Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. That's the game like I've been playing almost. Well, I, I lie every day. Genesis Ultimatum. Two green. Three blue, two red. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand. Exile Genesis Ultimatum. Nice, I got another ultimatum. If I get all of them, that'd be pretty sick. The one ultimatum I actually want to get is the most underrated one, like people are bashing it, is the the Merico one. The Just Guy one. That was really good. Sorry about that. Just organizing the cards a little bit. I don't want them to be in a mess. So move on. This video is going to be kind of long. I'm trying to speed it up if I can. Typically when I do boxes, they last like about 30, 40 minutes. I'm already halfway through. Plus I'm talking a lot so you guys don't get bored. It's not like me going... Bah, 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 bah. Go ahead through each one. When I say I look how fast I'm moving, I'm like, okay, let's let's speed this up. <laughs> Umori the Collector. So this is uh, Golgari, two colors, hybrid black green, hybrid black green. Each online card in your starting deck shares a card type. As Umori the Collector enters a battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you choose. Well, spells you cast as a chosen type. Cost one less to cast. Pretty cool. Let's put this aside. Right along. I didn't get the commander uh, pre cons because they were very difficult to get. Plus, they they get pricey. So yeah, probably get one of them, not all of them. Honestly, in the future, like I'll get some. But there's some there's some cards that are pretty broken. In the commander pre con. There's that counter spell one that costs for free when a certain condition applies, I'm not too sure. I would have to look that up. 
Aerial Ultimatum, alright. So we got, so far we got three of the Ultimatums. So return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. So two white, three black, two green. Awesome. And we got a foil neutralize. Awesome. Hopefully I get the one I want. If I don't get it, it's okay. I mean, I could buy it. It's pretty cheap at this point. Reason why, as I stated, probably said this earlier, reason why I want the ultimatums is for Jota. Because he makes them dirt cheap. Instead of paying seven, I'm going to be paying five for each one. He's a five dollar foot long. He's the subway commander. <laughs> Oh, there's a economy. The subs are not five dollars anymore. Which they were. Damn, shit's getting expensive. Garuda, Doom of Deaths. Or this commander is pretty broken. This creature. Let's read it. Let's read this for a second, shall we? Uh, Garuda, Doom of Deaths. Starting deck contains only cards with even, even converted mana costs. When Garuda enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards in a library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under control. Wow. That is broken. I could actually add that to one of my decks. I don't know how much that card goes for, but it's, it's pretty broken. I don't know per se, I would have to read the rules and the legality, how you would put this in one of the 99, because I see this being added as a, a card that's in one of the 99, or make it a commander itself. But if I make it a commander, here's, here's my rule, if I'm going to build a commander. Rule number one. If I know that creature is going to be a commander, I got to bling it out, make it foil, or have some type of sick alternate art. Because it's the commander that's representing my deck. So, all my commanders are foil. Just so you know. I invest my time and my money into them. Ports would crash your eye. This is probably a bulk. I'm not sure. Trample, whenever one or more creatures you control, a trample deals combat damage to a player. Create an XX green dinosaur. Beast creature token with trap war X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player. Alright. Little polywam symbiote. Still got that box topper laying on the cut. So I got something nice and juicy. Out of that. Cavern Whisperer. Nice. So. It has Mutate Menace whenever this creature mutates. Each opponent discards a card. Cool. I like that. One Yard Larker is a good card too. Oh, I got the non-foil one of this. Satiable Hemophage. So you got two. Yes! We did it. I, I wanted that card. It's not really worth money, but I really wanted it. So, target player gains 5 light. 5 light. 5 life and Spired Ultimatum deals 5 damage to any target. They draw 5 cards. The art is sick on this card. I don't know about you, but I like it. I want to get in a foil if it's cheap. I'll probably buy it foil. But having the regular is awesome. Just the fact that I have this card. So, I got 4 Ultimatums. Can I pull the last one out of the cycle? Foil Evolving Wilds. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. I pulled the ultimate of my wand. I'm pretty happy. I don't I honestly don't care about everything else. It'd be nice to get some juicy stuff, but again, no expectations with this set, so whatever I get, I'm happy with, honestly. To me, some of it is just binder fodder. But uh, some of it may be useful, I just have to read them to know what I'm dealing with. Mythos of Vajrak. So, this is uh, just Sky 1. Does 5 damage 
divide it as choose among any number of target creatures. Add their planeswalker if white blue was spent to cast a spell onto your next turn. Those permanents can't attack or block under activated abilities can't be activated. This is really cool. Really cool sorcery. Adaptive Shimmer. Okay. Put that right there. Put that right there. I'm gonna upload this once it's done. Once, once I finish this, I'm gonna upload. Post haste. Right away. Pyroceratops, what a name. <laughs> Some of these creatures, they got pretty creative with it, I'm not gonna lie. I, I thought I said horny mammoth, it's a honey mammoth. Necropanther, cool. Thanks for your locked on. Yadaro. Wandering monster. Let's see what this card's about. Dinosaur turtle, five colors, two red, trample haste. Cycling one, colors one, when you cycle Yadaro, wandering monster. Monster, monster. Shuffle it to your library for your grave art. If you cycle a card with your Daryl Wandering Monster four or more times this game, put it to the battlefield for your grave art instead. What? Eh. Don't like that. You have to do it multiple times to get that special effect or whatever. Trumpeting Gnar is our foil. Yeah. Eh, this card. Your Daryl's question. Very questionable. I really don't know how I feel about that. I thought I was going to get this box on Monday because um, when I ordered it, the set officially came out yesterday as of filming. I This is Saturday. So I was like, oh, am I going to get it Friday? Nope. They told me Monday I was going to get it, but luckily I got this today. So I'm pretty ecstatic that I'm doing this. Let's see. Skull Prophet, pretty cool. Pretty cool art. Mythos. I think we're gonna get all the mythos. Uh, mythos Anethrio. Um, destroy target online permanent if it's a creature or if green white was spent to cast a spell. Uh, friend just texting me right now. Uh, I'll look into it later. Yeah, I'm filming this on my phone. And me to look for now. Hey, you got a camera? This is your cell phone. Oh, it has a very good camera. But I should invest on a, a camera because I plan to do more videos soon. Yeah. There is that. That's all my hands my setup. So I got a better computer and I got a bunch of stuff. So that's that. Necro Panther. Cool. Look at that art. I love I love the effect a lot. Whenever this creature mutates, return target creature card with convert a mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Awesome. Extinction event. Well, we're not gonna Talk about the elephant in the room, but yeah, we're going through a pandemic. Three colors, so black. Oof, that's so morbid what I said. Sorcery, choose odd or even. Exile each creature with convert amount of cost of the chosen value. Zero is even. Okay. Uh, foil plummet. For those of you wondering. <laughs> For the fall. There's something in my head that I want to say, but I don't want to jinx it. I'll probably say it at the end of the video. Because it's happened before, and and when new sets, it doesn't really happen that much. But we'll see. We shall see. Nice, we got the Just Guy Triome. Awesome. I love the art of this card too. I wonder how the alternate looks, but this is very good to pull. 
the one plus of the triumphs i gotta say it's better than the kanza tarkir ones the uncommon cycle ones which is just the uh, three colors they come in tapped now you got a, a chance to use something else besides just putting on the battle you could just cycle it or discarding it it's a nice bonus so definitely replacing that Oof. Look at that, they got a companion token here. I didn't realize that. But yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Blood cut off. <laughs> Blood cutting screams. Parcel Beast. Alternate art. Um, pretty useful card. Pretty useful. Bastion of Remembrance. This is a useful card too, so I'm gonna put this aside. <laughs> this creature got banned the moment it got revealed. Pretty cool I got this card. Imagine if this card was legal. Do you know how ridiculous that'll be? And the sad part is, it ha it's an otter. So I was like, I wanna play an otter commander. No, you can't. Broken, um,. Mechanic, we're not gonna allow that. <laughs> it's just sad how fast it got banned. It was ridiculous. It didn't even see the light of day. Like the power level of, of certain cards coming out as a new as a new set comes out, like more cards are getting banned more than ever because now a lot of cards are becoming more broken as new sets are coming out. Let me correct me if I'm wrong. But I have been seeing it. Um, should Pioneer be a format? Uh, I apologize. Well, I'm a bit thirsty. Sorry about that. I drink a bit of water. Should Pioneer be a format? I believe they shouldn't have done that. They should have kept Modern and... Um... Pioneer, in my opinion, is a bad idea. It's, it's a good mechanic. It's, I'm okay with it existing. But in my opinion, they shouldn't have brought out Pioneer. It uh, Pioneer is a good format for me, honestly, because Pioneer starts off where I started in Magic, essentially. I should be in, invested into it because I started in Return to Ranico, essentially. Playing competitively. But I just don't agree with it because it's making um, Modern more saturated. And I don't like that. Obush, the pray Piercer, um, Companion, starting that contains only cards with odd converted mana cost and nine cards. If a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. Cool. Uh, Wizards should have focused more in modern. Shame on them for not focusing in so much. And people are asking why is modern an expensive format to get into and all that well as history serves and the moves they are making you can see why and that's just my opinion pioneer is a perfectly fine format enjoy it and play it but in my opinion pioneer shouldn't have existed they should have stick to a modern and implement modern as much as they can but me being the person i am I got into Standard when I first started, and then a friend of mine told me to get into Commander, and he convinced me, and ever since then, I stopped being competitive and played Commander. So there's that. Commander's a great format. Those of you who are watching this and are not playing Commander, should play Commander. Nice. I want this creature for my Abzan deck, and you can see why. Frontland Philidar. Vigilance. Cat beast. Creatures you control vigilance have one colorless tap target creature 3-5. This is a really good combat trick. Very, very good. The creatures must have vigilance to do this. But it's a good investment. This is gonna go to my Anafenza Hate Bear deck. Two packs left, we're almost ending, so this is gonna be like a 40 minute something video, hopefully.
unless I pull something ridiculous that makes me pause. But other than that, having a really good time pulling this. I hope you guys are enjoying as well. Uh, a bit talking a lot. I don't know if you guys like it or don't like it, let me know. But um, you could comment anything and I could talk about it and make it. Um, this creature mutates, you gain four life. Cool. But just like our corn. Colossification, dude. This card is severely underrated and extremely broken. So for five colors, two green, um, enchantment, aura, enchant creature with Colossification enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 20, plus 20. Here's my input on this card. Play this card if you can get it discounted or able to play it, but flash it in. Flash it in before your turn even begins, like cast it during an opponent's turn. And if your commander is open and you have this buff on it and they can't remove it, GG's. That's a game ender right there. And it is possible I might add this to a certain deck. Wink, wink. I'm not going to say, but I'm debating whether to add it in or not. But it's, it's a very good finisher. Very good finisher and it kills people. It ends lives. This, when I saw this, I was like, yo, it's it's a vanilla, but the art is sick on this card. A pangolin, a nightmare pangolin, pangolin, so cool. Huntmaster Liger, okay, we got Ligers. As well, Song of Creation. This card I heard is broken too. Uh, what color is what green, one blue, one red? You may play additional land on each of your turns. When you cast a spell, draw two cards. At the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. The art is super sick. I love the art. I can see why this card is broken. It's just the last part. People are not going to like that. But most likely, you're going to be playing your whole hand at that point. So really, it's not going to... Ruin your day, but yeah. And then we got a uh, Perimeter Sergeant for Really, really nice card. Love the art on that. Alright. We're getting to the bottom of the barrel now. Super sick. Like, I'm just looking at that card. Like, right now I'm seated. As I open the booster pack, I'm just looking at Sonic Creation. I'm like, wow, I pulled that. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth money really, but it's a really good card nonetheless. After I finish this, I'm just going to put all the cards in the booster box except for the ones that are like rare of or of mention, which I'm going to put in a separate pile. The Uzalith. This card is very, very good. It's actually a highly sought after card in the set. The Ozolith, one color is legendary artifact. When a creature control leaves a battlefield, if I had counters on it, put those counters on it on the Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters for the Ozolith on target creature. Sorry about that, was interrupted for a second. Put the person to back off because I'm recording as as of this moment. Well, never mind. Past the 40 minute mark. Might as well make it an hour. Migratory Great Horn. When this creature mutates, search your library for basic land card, put it to the battlefield tap to shuffle your library. Good Demir card, um, Cunning Night Bonder, Blue Black Hybrid, Blue Black Hybrid, Flash, Spell of Flash. You cast cost one less to cast and can't be countered. I'll put this aside, it's a really good card. 
crystal. The Abzon one. And then we got a dirge bat. Two colors, two black, flash flying. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature, planeswalker, and opponent controls. It's pretty good. Pretty good mutate trigger. Okay. We got a little bit left. We got three packs left. Nice. Alternate Cloud Piercer. Really cool. We take three colors, one red, reach. When this creature mutates, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Okay. Zack off crystal. Got a, a cub board and lifelink. Whatever this creature mutates, create two, one, one. White creature to cat creature tokens with lifelink. Three colors to the white. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Am I gonna go the ultimatum that I'm missing, or am I gonna get like a nice saucy card? So far, I'm satisfied. Uh, uh, yeah, satisfied with this. We got uh, Chevelle, Bane, Bane of Monsters, Wild, Black One Green, Legendary Creature, Human Rogue, Death Touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponent controls no permanents with bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Whatever permanent the opponent controls a bounty counter on it dies, you gain three life and draw a card. I'm actually glad I pulled that. Pretty happy. <gasps> <laughs> And I got this in foil. Holy shit. Uh, Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. One green, one blue. Legendary, Legendary Creature Human Druid. This is broken. Alright. Whatever tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. Okay? Five cards, one green, one blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. A mythic foil. <laughs> That's a sought after card too. I don't know how much it is, but the fact that it's foil is worth plenty of money. Possibly the most valuable card in the set, or if not top five valuable. This is insane. Alright. Alright. Exceeded my expectations. Pretty happy about that. Two mythics in one pack. Amazing. That was best pack in the whole box, hands down. <laughs> Look at this! I really wanted that card too. Dryad of Magistrate, what colors one white? Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. A 1 3 human wizard. Dude, and at the end is when it gets crazy. And I got a foil. I got the Mardu Mythos of Snap Mythos of Snap decks. Uh, two colors, two white. Each player chooses an artifact, a creature, and a chapman, and a planeswalker from among the Lawn Land permanents they control. They sacrifice the rest. If Black Red was sped to cast a spell, you choose a permanent for each player instead. Wow. <laughs> wow this was amazing absolutely amazing I'm not gonna lie this this box is incredible <laughs> I definitely did not expect that I am super happy now. Considering Harvester, sick art on this. Wow. 
I'm still shocked and awe as to what I pulled. Unpredictable cyclone. I'm add, this is probably a bulk. Three colors, two red. If a cycling ability of another non land card would cause you to draw a card, instead, exile cards from the top of your library. I'll tell you, exile a card that shares a card type with exile card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, then put the exile cards that were cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. Cycling, too. Yeah. This is um for cycling. And we got a foil rugged highlands. And that was the last pack, but it is not in there. We have the box topper right here. The Ikeora box topper. Let's see what we pull here. Is there a little tab? Yeah, there is to the side. I don't have ex like high expectations as to what I'm gonna pull, but if I pull that card, it's gonna be nuts. Here we go. This is the box topper. Dorat the perfect pets. Foil and all that. All right, cool. All right, guys, it was a long one. But I really enjoyed opening this box and I'm very, very satisfied as to what I pulled. Only missed one ultimatum, which I'm just going to buy, honestly. I'm happy with all the cards I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. Thank you guys for watching. Until the next time.